the Chovas uh, Ulevovs in 606 had said there are two types of tzaddikim. There's a tzaddik who never sinned in his life. Well, he sinned, but he was never classified not as a tzaddik. And you have a person, he was not a tzaddik, and due to doing tshuva, he was classified due to his tshuva as a tzaddik. Right? That was the second paragraph. Vomer Aleim, he says, David speaks about these two classifications of tzaddikim. Ashri Odom, Lo Yachshuv, Lo Hashem, Lo Ovon. Fortune is the, is the person where God does not consider it that he possesses sin. Vein Berukon Rebiyo, and he has no deceit in his spirit. The Zohar Akatazos, Bachron, what does he mention? This is the second classification. When they need Mitziosa, because this is something which is very unusual, very rare, that a person never was at a level where he was not classified as a tzaddik. He was always a tzaddik. Hashem, if a God would always focus on our sins, you never survive. You can't. There's no such thing. It's remote. That person, every tzaddik, to do only good. There's no person. It's something which is very rare, very unusual. He says, that's the reason now, now you understand it. After we say, what's the first request? Because since it has relevance to 99.99% of people, we, we're not perfect. Because it's inevitable that we have some degree of failing. That's why this is the first and foremost issue that has to be addressed. Choni lodem das, because that you need intelligence, you have to have discernment, you have discretion to be able to make an evaluation. Did you sin? Did you not sin? But if you understand that you're not perfect due to your intelligence and your ability to make that, so then we say, Ashavino bin Lusar Secho. Kavur se psichas to yosen ina achuva vaslicho. Kurutzeb is chuva. We say, Ashem wants us to do chuva. Han marbil is loach. God in abundance wants to forgive us. He wants us to do tshuva more than we want to do tshuva. He wants to, uh, us to be forgiven more than we want to be forgiven because he recognizes the detriment of sin. We don't ha have an appreciation to what degree it actually undermines our, our, our value. See, he's harotza de tshuva and he's hamarbelus loach. He's not just solech, he's marbelus loach. So if that's the case, if tshuva is so vital and so because... It has relevance to every human being. Mm -hmm. The ten aspects which have to be explained regarding tshuva. What, what is tshuva? What is, because if either you do it or you don't do it. Mahiya tshuva. Firstly, what is tshuva? Sheni And when it's divided, how many parts are there? What has to be addressed? How many issues have to be addressed? Shlishi b'matiyah tshuva mino odom. He explains the third. What is a prerequisite in a, to a person's repentance? Haravi b'vir gedei reo. What are its essential elements? Understand if you ever study, which we did many many years ago, shari tshuva from Rabbi Yona. Mm -hmm. Tshuva, the basic outline the Rambam says, remorse, being committed not to do it again. That's tshuva. That's tshuva. But there are many levels. Qualitative tshuva. What persons could say, I'm sorry, and a person could really be f remorse. See, regret is one thing. What is remorse? Remorse has another connotation than regret. Alan, you're, you're a person of language. Remorse. First, I regret doing it. When you have remorse, it's a more intense regret. You f you're pained because of what you did it. And he speaks about the, the different levels of pain, of anguish. Yogo and Anocha, the shame. The person is ashamed of himself because he did the wrong thing. You s when, you, when, you s when the person says to you, who, who, who are you speaking to? You speak to God. You're not speaking to yourself. You're standing before Hashem and saying, Ashamnu Bogadnu. I regret, I have remorse. So if you really have a sense who you're speaking to, the shame. But that's a special level that you feel ashamed of your past behavior. But these are qualities 
in, in tshuva itself, it brings tshuva to another level. Just to end with one thing. Rabbi Yonah writes in Yeshari Tshuva, he says if you have a garment, and the garment is embedded with, with grime, and you just wash it superficially, so the only thing that you, you clean and you launder is, is the, what, the, the upper surface. But what's embedded in the fibers of the, of the garment, that uncleanliness remains there. You have to use certain detergents. You have to really soak it, and you have to rub it. Otherwise, you're not going to extract all the, the uncleanliness from the garment. He says the same thing with chuva. You know, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Okay? Very superficial. But the essence, because if you look in Sushom Ramchal, he says, if God is, everything is mishpat, he did the wrong thing. So how, by saying, I'm sorry, how does that correct the wrong? You can't undo the wrong of the past. So it's really the pain and the regret and the remorse, that's in the place of, that is the compensating for the pleasure you had. It's a tit for tat. It's like you steal, you have to repay the debt. You have to repay. There's restitution. Restitution is only to the degree that you took. person steals 100, he returns 50. It's not full restitution. So whatever degree of pleasure you had, or whatever way you exercised your independence of God, your arrogance, you have to submit and you have to be pained. So, t- so therefore, it's, it's really one is countering the other. Otherwise, you can't have a full, re- you're not get, taking the full dose. You have to take the full dose of the, of the, of the remedy to be able to alleviate and to reinstate yourself, to rehabilitate yourself. That's the Mesut Sisharim, together with the Rebbe Niyona, to be continued.